Hello friends, this video on environmental issues part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us try to understand what do we mean by depletion of ozone layer. So this ozone which acts as a protective layer surrounding the earth. So it has a particular thickness. So there is a specific thickness of the ozone layer. Now this thickness determine a lot of things. Now as I said, now let us suppose the weather is extremely cold and you are using a blanket while you sleep. Now the thickness of your blanket also matters. So if you use a thick blanket, this is going to provide you more protection. If you use an extremely thin and light blanket, it might not give you enough protection. So in a similar way, if the ozone layer is depleting, that means the thickness of the ozone layer is reducing. So its protective nature or it or uh, its protective quality will also reduce and that is something which we don't want. So depletion of ozone layer is the decrease in the amount of ozone in the atmosphere. So the amount of ozone which is present if that starts decreasing what will happen the amount of protection will also start decreasing so therefore ultraviolet radiation will start entering inside the earth and its harmful effects will be seen. But unfortunately, now it has been observed that there is a decrease in the amount of ozone in the atmosphere and that is threatening us and this decrease is termed as depletion of ozone layer. Now, when there is too much of decrease in the thickness of ozone layer, it results in the formation of ozone hole. That means in the entire layer, a hole has been formed due to lack of ozone. So that is called as ozone hole and ozone hole is a serious threat for the survival on the earth. Now how do we get to know that the ozone layer is depleting, depleting or the amount of ozone is decreasing? Now the thickness of the ozone layer is measured in terms of a unit called Dobson units. So to measure it we have Dobson unit. So what is this Dobson unit? So one Dobson unit is equal to 0 0.01 millimeter at standard temperature and pressure. So that means this is the unit which is used to measure the thickness of the ozone layer. So now as the thickness reduces, we get to know that the amount of ozone is reducing. Now what causes depletion of ozone layer? Why is the amount of ozone reducing? Now one of the important cause is the use of chlorofluorocarbons. Now what is chlorofluorocarbons? Well these are inert, colorless and orderly gases and they are normally used in refrigerators and ACs. So the, these chemicals are already used there. Now it is since it is colorless and orderless, its presence is extremely difficult to detect. And at the same time, this in itself, CFC, it is often abbreviated as CFC because the name is quite big. Now CFCs are themselves non-toxic, but at higher levels of the atmosphere under high energy radiation, these CFCs get converted into chlorine. And what can these chlorine molecules do? One chlorine molecule can destroy around 1 lakh ozone molecules. So that is a big number. So just one molecule of chlorine will be able to destroy around 1 lakh ozone molecules. So just imagine the huge distraction that would happen if chlorine formation takes place in the outer layers of the atmosphere. And in fact, this has become one of the major causes which is threatening I mean, the existence of ozone layer and from so what we'll have to do we have to control the use of chlorofluorocarbons now with so much use of refrigerators and air conditioners the amount of chlorofluorocarbons have also increased now due to their increase the amount of chlorofluorocarbons reaching the outer layers of atmosphere have also increased so formation of chlorine has also increased and therefore destruction of ozone molecules have increased. Now how exactly chlorine destroys ozone molecules is by acting as a catalyst. So during the reaction, during the chemical reaction where ozone molecule gets destructed, in that reaction chlorine just acts as a catalyst.
So chlorine acts as a catalyst and therefore it itself remains unaltered. So nothing happens to the chlorine molecule. It is just able to destroy. So one chlorine molecule is able to destroy some one lakh ozone molecule. So that is deadly and that is quite threatening. So here the disadvantage is that even if you have just, just let us imagine that in the outer atmosphere layers you just have one chlorine molecule. It is just one chlorine molecule which is present there. So even that one chlorine molecule can destroy all the ozone molecules because the chlorine is a catalyst. So chlorine itself will never get destroyed. So the same chlorine molecule can continuously keep on destroying more and more ozone molecules because nothing is actually harming the chlorine molecule. So that is the worst part in this case. So let us look at this picture of the earth which shows how the ozone concentration when it changes how it impacts the earth. So here you can see the ozone concentration has been denoted in terms of Dobson units as you can see as the value of ozone concentration decreases the color of the earth changes which shows that as it becomes very less somewhere around 100 Dobson units it becomes more it, it becomes more prone to ultraviolet radiation so the violet color gives that hint that it has become more prone to the ultraviolet radiation and as the concentration of ozone increases we are well protected against ultraviolet radiation so the ultraviolet radiation cannot enter inside the uh, so that's how the concept of ozone layer works. So let us quickly look at some of the consequences of ozone layer depletion. What can happen if the ozone layer gets depleted? So one of the important consequences would be skin cancer. As I said, when the skin gets exposed to ultraviolet radiation, skin cancer can happen. So that is one of the deadly impact leukemia and breast cancer so basically the chances of cancer increases that's because due to the extremely high energy of uh, the ozone molecules or due to the high energy of the uh, ultraviolet radiation what happens is that they become very harmful to the cells and also the DNA and the proteins they have the tendency to absorb ultraviolet radiation. So these two things put together can actually damage the cells and this can cause cancer damage the immune system and once the immune, sy immune system gets damaged it can even lead to death because immune system is nothing but uh, the shoulders of our the shoulders of our body it helps us to fight infections now if the immune system itself is damaged even a small infection can kill the person because the body will not be able to fight against it snow by blindness or cataract so it, it can also cause several inflammation related to the cornea because uh, the ultraviolet radiation have negative impacts on the cornea. So as a result, it can cause cataract or it can even cause permanent damage to the cornea. Damage plants. How can it damage plants? Well, due to ultraviolet radiation, it can adversely affect the process of photosynthesis because for photosynthesis, what plants need is the visible light. But if instead of that, a lot of ultraviolet radiation is available, it will affect the process of photosynthesis. So this will also cause more and more water to evaporate through the stomata. Therefore, the moisture content in the soil will reduce. As a result of this, the plant will I mean, the plant will become very dry. They will lose water. They will lose too much of water. Aquatic plants may even die due to this ultraviolet radiation's presence. So these are some of the harmful effects of ozone layer depletion. And that is why we do not want the ozone layer to get depleted. After all, it is a protection for us. Now, the question is, how can we control the depletion of ozone layer? So controlling the depletion is all about controlling the causes which actually lead to ozone layer depletion. So as I said, the main cause is the use of chlorofluorocarbons. So we have to limit the production of chlorofluorocarbons. So if there are less chlorofluorocarbons, there are less probability that chlorine formation will take place in the upper layers. So therefore, the probability of destruction of ozone layer will also reduce a lot. So this is the first thing that we have to do because this is the major cause for depletion of ozone. 
minimize usage of pesticides now usage of all these chemicals for example uh, pesticides and insecticides these kind of chemicals also is harmful for the existence of ozone layer usage of eco friendly household cleaning products now many of the cleaning products contain a lot of harmful poisonous chemicals which interfere with the existence of ozone so they also like what i'm trying to say is chlorofluorocarbon is not the only substance which can produce chlorine there are other chemicals also which can disrupt ozone molecules now these kind of uh, substances which disrupt ozone molecules are present in uh, insecticides pesticides in some of the cleaning products like in in your home you might be using certain cleaning products to clean the floor to clean uh, the pots in the toilet there are many such cleaning products available and they all are very rich in harmful chemicals so these chemicals also uh, disrupt ozone molecules and therefore uh, we have to control the usage of these kind of products so we have to use eco friendly which is environment friendly and do not cause uh, any harm to the environment so we have to use those kind of products Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.